the age of 31, Lane Nakagawa has earned a living from the sea for more than 15 years, and he feels it's time to give something back. So he's teamed up with the Pacific Islands Fisheries Group to do just that. This morning, we're tagging along with some taggers who play key roles in a research project on Hawaii's bottom fish fishery. Lane Nakagawa is a third generation fisherman who wants to give something back to the fishing community. Eddie Ebisua Jr. is a second generation fisher who will be logging important fishery data. And Clay Tam, who is better known for his work with the state's Papio tagging project, is adding his experience to the team. First time fishing off of Maui. Oh yeah? Yeah. I don't know, whatever Eddie told you, it's all rumors. <laughs> There's no fish over here. Oh. No good. No good huh? <laughs> All these areas out here is this is where I learned how to fish when I was a kid. And oh, yeah? that was um me and my dad and my grandfather we used to fish all these areas um since I was like five years old, four years old. Oh, yeah? yeah. So I teaching my cousins and they can teach their kids and all of that and pass it on down like for what my dad did for me. And that's what I wanna do for them. And that's a thing, yeah, where, yeah. Uh, you know, people love to eat fish, gotta come from somewhere. Yeah, Somebody's yeah. gotta go get them. Exactly. It exactly. takes, in the bottom fish fishery, it takes a skill to go get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. This stuff is passed on to generations, you know? Yeah. Before dropping the lines, Lane confers with Basil Oshiro, a veteran bottom fisher. Accompanying Basil is Clay's son, Bree. What are we fishing for? Like, Onaga, Ehu, and stuff? Onagas? Oh, okay, then let me change my rig. Well, you might have to change your uh, stuff because you said we're trying for Onaga, so. Yeah, I just. We'll do a four hook, four hook rig and um, set it all up and just try to see what's going on down there. That rod on your uh, rig, the stuff are now rod you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's really. Yeah, I was feeling that, that action on it all. It's really soft. Yeah. Catches a lot of tuna too, you know? It's good makes the you can walk away from the rod and it doesn't slack the line at all because it's mm. so soft it keeps the tension really good i see it's a good dual purpose rod you know mm. that rod came from my grandfather on my mother's side oh. gave it to my dad wow. and then my dad gave it to me well my mother's dad is a shoreline caster he's a shoreline fisherman oh. so i learned the shoreline fishing from him and also from my dad, folks. But um, yeah, when it came to this type of fishing, it was from my dad and his father. So two of my grandfathers on each side, fishermen. Mm. Yeah. That's where the experience comes from. Okay, so here we go. On this trip, PIFG observer Eddie Ebisui will be recording more than just the number of fish caught and their size. We're taking all kinds of information and we logged on how many reels you're using, how many hooks per line, how far you're fishing from the bottom, um, any type of predation, because that will affect uh, you know, the, the outcome of the trip, even uh, dragging anchor. All of that will ultimately end up affecting the fishing effort. So we're trying to get all this kind of information down, um, find out what kind of what fish stock we have for uh, future management measures. Yeah. All of this information will remain confidential and will be carefully analyzed to provide a much clearer okay. picture to better manage the fishery. How much you put it in there? Just like two little handfuls, just to uh, get some smell down there. Yeah. Where are we at? 160. Yeah, 160. Oh, wow. Let's see how it goes. Okay, Eddie boy. Yeah. Going overboard. Or, uh, oh, Molokai is super nice today. Where are we at on the dial? 77. So, lean on this knob, I don't have to touch it. Yeah, the drag is all set. Um, Play with the yeah, I guess you can play with it to see how it is. Okay, thanks. Any bites? I got one bite. As soon as it drops. 
Holy, I haven't gone this deep in a while, huh? Yeah, you can tell it'll line it. <laughs> hey, wind speed and direction. Wind speed's kind of like east, about two knots, maybe. And wave height? Mm, zero. Sorry, gotta ask. Yeah. Oh, bring them up. Yeah, we'll go uh, bring it up and we'll try to go back up. So just come right on. Yeah. Just come right on. There you go. Yeah. Still got bait. Still got all the baits. Play you something. See, I knew I had something on that line. Wow. <laughs> oh, hey, who? Juveniles. Yeah. Hey, it works. It works. You'll we'll flip them in that bucket. Yep. Okay. The tag. That was ready to go already. Yeah. The next few steps happen rather quickly. Lane uses a hollow metal tube to vent air from the fish's swim bladder. This will allow the fish to get back to the bottom easier. The stomach is also pushed back in. A dart tag with a unique identification number is put in place, and the fish is measured. That was number 61, huh? 35.5. Right after that, the fish is returned to the bottom, often with the aid of a special weight called a drop shot. There he goes. Very good, successful. Good going. Good going. Let's go and uh, try and move back up towards basal and see, get another drop in and see what's going on. It worked. 